making contact sheets in Lightroom. Really simple. So I've got everything broken into collections. And I forgot to tell you in the last one, um, you can always delete a collection. You can also delete things out of collections. So if I don't want this anymore, it's gone. Oop. And then if I did that by accident, I can go back and put it back. Back. If I do this in the library, delete. Are you sure? So you know you're in a collection if you don't get this. Um, it's Lightroom's like, are you sure you want to get rid of this? Because I'm taking it out of the catalog. I'm getting rid of it completely. Are you sure? So we don't want to do that. We want to cancel that. But you can always do it in collections. You can add and, and add and remove and add and remove. You can also change the name of your collection. Collections are just organization. All photographs is your entire library. So making contact sheets, real simple. One thing to begin with is you may have taken your photos out of order. Um, you know, I asked you to do certain things a certain way and maybe you took part of part A on one day and then you moved to B and then you moved to C and so all your images are out of order. If you want to rearrange your photos in your collection, under here where it says sort, instead of having caption time, and notice all these different ways you can sort. You can sort by your edit time, last time you worked on it, how you rated it, uh, your label text, all that kind of stuff, your file name, or custom order. And custom order then, what's nice is if I want, let's find one that's a little bit more accessible, like if I want to move um, Fred, my cat, if I want to move him to the end, remember I have to picture, pick it up by the picture, and I want to move my cat to the end. And then if I go back to capture time, goes right back. Another thing I want to point out to you before you make your contact sheets is if you do want to change um, any kind of information, um, oh wait, I want metadata. If you want to change any um, anything like your file name, you can do that here. Um, so if you wanted to name this, you know, Fred, which is my cat, was my cat's name. He's no longer with us. He was a cute cat. Um, if you wanted to call this Fred, you can change the name here. I don't usually do that because I don't. This is universal, so if I change the name here, it's actually going to change the file name as well. So other things you can do here is you can put a title. So I could call it Fred, here, or you can put a caption. Um, I recommend doing this, especially for your contact sheet. Um, maybe if I can't, if you don't think I can tell the difference between things, um, you you can give it titles. Um, just a nice thing to do. You can change the file name too, but like I said, it's also going to change the actual file. So this file here, did that come from here? Yeah, it came from 2013, right? Um, no, that was the star. Yeah. It'll change this from IMG 170, 1575. It will change it to Fred. So that's usually why I do title or a caption instead. So, making a contact sheet. Have them all selected. Then go to print. Isn't he cute? That's when he got his yellow belt. Um, one picture. Wait, I had them all selected. Why? Because of the template I'm using. This is a single image template. I need to go into my template browser, into Lightroom templates, and if we scroll down, you will see four by five contact sheet. Boom. Wow, that's got a hefty long name, file name, when it's really just Henry. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to title this one. Whoops. Title this one Henry. Print. Oops. What happened? Didn't have them all selected, just had him. All of them. Print. Still showing me file name. I, I changed it, the title to Henry. Didn't change the file name though. So here's where you're going to put the information that I request. If you scroll down, notice that there's lots of stuff here. Okay. Um, you can change your margins. Right, it was set up as four by five. 
I like four by five, big enough for me to see. Please don't do that. Do, don't, don't do this to me. Please, I have bad eyes. Don't do that either. Whoops, what have I done? I think it was a four by five, right? Five. Oh, I don't know, let's just go back. There we go, just clicked on the other side. Um, so, right here we've got guides. Don't need those. I like that better. But if you, I don't know, maybe I, I, I don't need rulers. I don't need paid bleach. Um, image cells kind of nice. I'll leave that up to you. But down, 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 photo info. File name. So right now it's only showing file names. I am going to change that edit it. I'm going to, I don't want the file name. I don't care what number it is. So just like a word processor, delete. What I do want is date. I just like year, year, month, month, day, day. Makes it a little bit short. I do want exposure. I do want ISO. I forgot to put exposure in. I forgot to hit insert after I did that. So if since I forgot to put exposure, I'm going to just put my cursor right here. Oops, put some, oh, that was good. Do over. I want my date. Insert. I want my exposure, but I'm going to put a few spaces in between, just like a word processor. Insert. I want my ISO. Insert. And I want my title. Insert. I actually want my title up here. I want it to be first. I don't know why period went in there, but it did. Get rid of that. Say done. Fred, taken in the, on the year 2014, May 30th, at 1 30th of a second at F4.0 ISO 400. I want to know all this. I want to know that you took it recently, and I want to know what your exposure was. Why didn't that come up here? Because I took this with my phone. This is a phone picture. No shutter speed, no aperture. It's phone. This I took with my DSLR. It was dated. Well, this was dated too. But it knows how my camera was set. So all of these I want. But my phone, no information, because my phone didn't have a shutter speed or an aperture. All right, now this is part A. I'm all done. How do I make it an electronic file? You are going to go, don't hit this, or you'll print it. You're going to go to printer dot dot dot, not this one, this one, right here. And why? Because if I show details, actually I didn't even have to show details, it's right here. Save as PDF. Where? If you're in the computer lab, it automatically thinks you want to save it to documents. I don't want to do that. Let's span this out. Find my hard drive, Arts156. And I am going to make a new folder. Got my catalog, got some movies. These are the movies that I'm making for you. Got my photos. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it Contact Sheets. Great. I don't want to call it this Lightroom. There's the original file name of my Henry picture and 12 others. Oh, 10 others. I thought it was 12. Get to know, uh-oh, your name, so I know whose is whose. Get to know your camera, A. Let's do it again. Go back to the library. Let's do B now. There's B. I'm going to give it a title, pumpkin, select them all, go to print. Notice that I didn't change my template, so they all popped in. 
even says pumpkin. Why? Because if I haven't quit, all that stuff is still there. All that stuff's still there. If I haven't quit Lightroom, it'll all still be there. The last time you went to print, it will be set up exactly the same way until you log off or quit. So I'm done. Make it a PDF. Printer dot dot dot. Save as PDF. Put it in my contact sheets folder. But again, I'm just gonna do this because it's a quick, quick way to do it. Click on that and switch that to B. And one more time, go back to library. Your C will be complete. Many more images than just one. But again, print just that one image. All the information's already there. Printer, save as PDF. Again, click on that, change it to C. Oh, lowercase, save. All done. All my photographs. I quit. Yeah, I really want to. If I go back to, these are for the people on the Mac, Lab it, and I go. If I go back to Lightroom and double click, They will all still be there. You people working at home who have it, this is all occurring on your hard drive, you don't have to worry about things disappearing on you, but nothing's going to disappear because I saved it to the proper place on my external hard drive here. Just for fun, for the people in the iGo lab, um, if I go home and I go into here, this is that original one that I copied when it was empty, so if I were to open this one, there shouldn't be anything there, she says. But notice that there's nothing there because I, I haven't been editing this one. I've been editing the one on my hard drive. Now, getting them submitted, 